how did you create such an accountable team? So accountability for your team is very important. First and foremost, your team has to want to be accountable and they want to have to have they have to have goals and a vision, right? It starts with their why. What why are they your buyer's agent, your listing coordinator, your assistant, your transaction coordinator? Why are they your business partner? Why? Is it for college tuition for their children? Is it because they want to have lavish vacations? I don't care what it is, but I need something there. So finding out their why is the, the most important part for motivation. Um, and then holding them accountable is the really, the, to me, was the easy part in how we succeeded. And so let me tell you what I did um, on how I set up certain processes and checks and balances. So let's just take a buyer's agent, right? I'll give you a true example. My buyer's agent, she had to do the ties 35. You guys have heard me say that. She had to do 35 items on every single rep uh, buyer she represented. And if she didn't, what would happen is in our contract, because I had a contract with my buyer's agent, her commission split would actually go down by 20%. So think about that. She was highly incentivized to do these things, and she believed in my mission, my vision, she believed that these things would get her more business, and so we made it accountable, right? You have to do these things, or I'm gonna get an additional 20%. And just so you know, buyer's agent, I don't want the 20%, but I'm doing it because guess what? It's a, a significant amount of money where you're gonna be highly motivated to do these things, right? So that's number one, right? And, and just so you guys know, that motivation can only go so far, because, right? everyone's busy and so how do you really make sure that she does all the ties 35 so here's what happened when the file would close my assistant Jennifer would actually have to sign off on the ties 35 so it would close commission check comes in everything would be there Jennifer would look and go did she do them and she'd have to initial and say you pass like right here's your your, your collect your 20% your commission check and you pass go now what happens is Jennifer highly incentivized and pushed her as well because Jennifer got a hundred dollar bonus on every closing if my buyer's agent actually did the ties 35 so as you guys can see that's just one example I had several examples like that there are a lot of checks and balances you know when you really want to build a team and, and, and be able to take a step back and see your team grow and, and run like a machine you have to set those checks and balances in place otherwise I'm telling you you're going to be micromanaging and I don't want to micromanage I want to empower my team to do the best that they can and I want to put certain checks and balances and processes in place so they can't fail or if they fail it kind of hurts them doesn't paralyze them but it kind of hurts them where they go you know what I messed up on this one you know it's twelve thousand dollars additional Tyler got or five thousand and I got to get back on a bad wagon you know I, I can't let that happen again so it hurt them enough to where they wanted to correct that bad behavior so I would say set up checks and balances, absolutely. You know, Think about checks and balances you can put in place tomorrow for your team to hold them highly accountable, but also make sure you go back to their motivation, their why of why they want you know, to, to sell 1,000 homes, 500 homes, 200 homes, 10 homes, whatever that number may be.